Yeah, Janela, you went down to the Senior Bowl and, and had an outstanding week there. What are some of the things that you feel you could do to continue that extension and become an even better pro than you were a college uh, prospect? Um, just just continually working, you know, stay on that drive of getting better each and every day, um, no matter what I do. Hey, I want to follow up on that, Janaris. That week down there, um, what was that opportunity like, and just kind of how uh, how, do, how do you feel like you seized it going up against some of the other top seniors in the country? Oh, it was a great opportunity. Um, I was waiting on that invite, you know, for the longest. Um, I, coming into uh, the 2020 season, 20, uh, 20 season, you know, I was on a watch list, and you know, that's something that I continuously had in the back of my head of wanting to achieve. Uh, was to, you know, to go out there and you know put put together my best uh, games to, you know, have an opportunity to go out there to Mobile, Alabama, um, to the Senior Bowl, and you know, I can't be more grateful for the opportunity that I had to go down there and compete against, you know, some of the top players in the country, and you know, to get that coaching and you know to uh, just compete every day. Uh, Janaris Mateos from Time Out Brazil. First of all, congratulations for going for the, the NFL draft. Uh, watching your day, I personally see that you, you big, make big plays on special teams, and this is really important for the NFL. So how do you think that you're developed in, in a special team, like being a guy who can block kicks, it, it's good for the NFL, like a guy who can make more than just play on defense? Um, it's, it's very big in the NFL, you know, a lot of guys, you know, it's 53 man roster, a lot of guys, you know, have to make their mark on special teams first. Um, and that's something that I'm, uh, you know, ready to do, uh, whether it's run down on kickoff, uh, you know, punt, return, um, you know, anything, I'm willing and ready to do anything, you know, uh, that's what's going to keep you in the league. Um, and that's something that, you know, a lot of NFL people got to do that's on the roster. Hey, J. Rob, going back to the Senior Bowl, what was the feedback that you got from teams going into that week and then after that week? And also, what is it like having a guy like Jim Nagy in your corner who's singing your praises because of what you did during that week? Um, uh, going into that week, I just, you know, was just ready to go out there and compete and, you know, make my mark and, um, you know, get my um, – how teams, you know, get the eye on me. And, you know, ultimately after that, you know, um, I went down there and seized the opportunity that I had and, um, you know, made some plays um, in the game uh, and – us went through the week, you know, uh, put put it all together to have a great game that uh, Saturday. And, you know, from um, you know, I heard from some teams after that, and you know, I'm just continuously trying to get better. Hey man, this is uh, Phil Corral from Overtime Fantasy. Uh, congratulations on a great career at Florida State. Um, so, what are some players that you've been studying uh, to try to mold your game after, and what quarterback would you like to sack the most in the NFL? Um. Uh, you know, I, um, I've been studying, you know, some players that I've, you know, currently, you know, played with here at Florida State. Uh, Josh Sweat, Brian Burns, Demarcus Walker, uh, some other guys, Jason Pierre-Paul, you know, just trying to uh, pick little stuff uh, that I can get from their game and take it away and, you know, put it in my toolbox as well. And, um, yeah, what was your other question in that? Oh, the, what quarterback I want to sack? Um, honestly, I, I want to get my hands on every quarterback that I can, honestly. You know, how you doing? What's up? Um, uh, do you pay attention to scheme at all? Does does scheme matter in terms of uh, your style of play? Do you look at okay, am I a five technique in a three four defense or am I a four three edge guy? Uh, do you pay attention to scheme in um, terms of your style of play? Scheme doesn't really matter. You know, I'm able to you know uh, play a five technique, play a uh, different position. So you know, whatever I'm willingly asked or ready to do, you know, I'm I'm, I'm ready to do. Um, whether it's dropping the coverage. Uh, in a 3-4 defense or, you know, be a 5-in and a 3-4 defense or be a 5-in and a, you know, 4-down defense. I'm uh, versatile and able to play, you know, multiple uh, positions and spots. I'm curious, how do you kind of sum up your, your Florida State career and, and where do you think the program kind of is right now compared to when you um, were I summed up as a, uh, my Florida State career is, you know, I had some ups and downs um, as a player, you know, as a team we have. Um, but I feel like we're on the rise right now to, you know, get back to the old Florida State way. I fully believe in Coach Novell and the staff, um, you know, to get this uh, place back to, you know, to back to the old uh, Florida State ways. Chris 
Agent Arias, thank you for taking my, uh, my question. You know, being there for four years at Florida State, is there, I asked this other question before the other, your other teammate, is there one game that you, or one moment that you're going to remember your entire life, you know, like after you know, football's over to, from your time at Florida State? Uh, I think uh, one, one moment that I'm going to remember is forever is, you know, um, I got a sack against uh, NC State last year, and they called it targeting. That was one of the, you know, one of the biggest hit that I've, you know, done laid in my college career, and that's something that uh, you know I stayed with me forever. Agent Aris, Max Moody with Locked On Seminoles. So when you look at your scouting reports, everyone sort of gravitates towards your size and your measurables and how impressive they are, and they talk about your potential. But I'm wondering. What are some aspects of your game that you think have developed that, that maybe scouts are overlooking a bit headed into the draft? Um, you know, um, I, I feel like I can be that pass rusher, you know, that, that can, you know, go in the league and make a mark uh, tremendously just with, like you said, my body size and type and, you know, measurables. You know, um, I feel like my best football is ahead of me, and, you know, I'm just not making those strides to, you know, being that best player that I can be. Right, we'll go back to the Mateus. Mateus from Tema, Brazil. Just, just a follow up. Uh, another time, watching your game to see you like being a, a guy who can uh, stand or can put the hands on the ground for like going for the quarterback. And you think that maybe that versatility makes some teams think that you can maybe have a transition for outside linebacker for being a guy who make one or two covers and not just be a pass pressure on the next level. Of course, uh, that versatility makes me that type of player that can, you know, be a base DM but also drop in the coverage. Sometimes I'll be an outside linebacker that, you know, can also rush. Um, but, you know, I, I can play the run as well. So, you know, that versatility can help me out in, uh, you know, major ways once I get to the next level. Hey, Janaris, appreciate you taking my question. Um, Carolina was obviously your best game from a sack production standpoint last year, and untapped potential is something that's littered like all over your scouting reports. But as a pass rusher, are there still some moves that you're trying to add to your repertoire right now? Is that something that you've been working in your training? Um, of course, uh, just, you know, being more fundamentally sound with my moves and, you know, uh, working different kind of moves off my first initial move and, you know, trying to get a chop dip rip down and, you know, Long I'm just using my um, speed to par as well, you know, just using those necessary moves that fix my body type and my measurables and, you know, can make me uh, successful. We have a lot of we, when you sign a scholarship, you know, the, the deal is that the school helps pay for your education and gives you some cool perks, but then you turn around and play football and you help the university make a whole bunch of money. A lot of fans, former players, if they have success financially in the NFL, they should turn around and uh, reinvest it back into their alma mater. Uh, what kind of conversations do, do players have when it comes to that, and what do you want to give back to university if you're ever in that position? Um, you know, I, I plan on being a booster here. You know, Florida State, uh, you know, program and Florida State fan base as well. You know, has poured into my life tremendously. Um, uh, 2018 for sure, uh, when I lost my house to Hurricane Michael. So you know, I do want to pour back into the university that you know poured into me and you know helped me out when I went through my trouble times and you know. Not only that, I'll come back and, you know, and give my service to the, you know, current players that's there at the uh, current time, you know, just come back and, you know, get my insights and, you know, my, my, you know, whatever I went through, you know, just help those guys out and tell them, you know, through the process of, you know, how it went for me as well. All right. Thank you, Daryl.